Nathan Zagura here at Cleveland Browns Stadium where the Browns have defeated the Chicago Bears 20 to 17 going to nine and five on the season seven and one right here in front of the home fans and was this one easy? Nope. Was this one pretty? Nope. In fact, all you could say at the end of it was, wow, another dramatic win for the Cleveland Browns. So how did we get here? Well, first quarter, no scoring. Neither offense could really get going. Remember, the Browns down both tackles. Down their starting center, they lose Joel Batonio early in this one, and the Bears' defensive line was dominant. Into the second quarter, Joe Flacco threw an interception. It was returned down to the one-yard line after a bunch of penalties and plays. The Bears got it, and they were up 7-0. Tight end Cole Komet. Well, then Joe Flacco answered with his best drive of the day or at least of the first half because boy he would have better ones later on when we needed some clutch plays we'll get to that in a second he was able to lead the Browns down the field found David Njoku in the back of the end zone it was 7-7 that's the score we'd go into the half with after the Browns defense forced a three and out to open the second half Joe Flacco looked for Cedric Tillman over the middle he hit his receiver but as he caught the ball he was hit the ball popped into the air Tremaine Edmonds caught it ran it to the house 14 to 7 now the Bears two interceptions for Flacco they would add a field goal it would be 17 to 7 and it felt like this game was getting away from the Browns late in the third quarter but then Trent Taylor their punt return of the Bears he muffed the punt Mahmoud Diabati fell on it and the Browns were in business near the 20 of the Bears with a chance to make this a one score game Joe Flacco's third interception of the day had David Njoku open the ball was late and behind him it got intercepted and it felt like the Browns were dead in the water, but this isn't the same old Browns. This team, they're never out of it. They always believe, and Joe Flacco all of a sudden got it going. He hit Marquise Goodwin for a 57-yard of the longest catch of the season for the former speedy receiver who is back making big plays for the Browns. That set up a Dustin Hopkins field goal to be 17-10 to after the defense, which played so well in this game. Think about it. They gave up 17 points. One was a pick six. One was an interception back to the one-yard line. They gave really just one field goal in the field of play all day. But now you get the ball back, the defense. They were so good. JOK having a monster game. He had an interception. He had a sack. He had tackles for loss. He had all of it. And so Joe Flacco goes back to work and finds Amari Cooper. He threads the needle between three Chicago Bears. In fact, they were all so close, they hit each other. And then Amari tiptoed down the sideline. It was 17-7. 17 to 17, the Browns had tied it up here late in the fourth quarter. After the defense got the ball back for the offense again, it was Joe Flacco trying to lead the team down. Could they get into field goal range for Dustin Hopkins to end it? Well, he hit David Njoku on the first play of the drive. They got to about the 50-yard line. And then after going backwards, they faced third and 15. And off of his back foot in the face of immense pressure, it was the clutch play of the game. Joe Flacco, he found David Njoku again, the chief in this one. 10 catches, over 100 yards, another touchdown. Now his career highs in receptions, receiving yards, and in receiving touchdowns. The guy, unbelievable, forged in the fire earlier this season. The Chief, in a season of chaos, in a season of uncertainty and great injuries, he's been a constant. Amari Cooper also over 100 yards and a touchdown. So that one set up the Browns to run it three times, force the Bears to use all their timeouts, and then Dustin Hopkins from about 34 yards put it through. The Browns would be up 20-17. to 17. And if you think it was just over at that point, oh, you haven't been paying attention. That's not the way things go for the Browns this season. The Bears got a pass to the sideline, and the Browns, as they have done a few times this season, didn't tackle. And all of a sudden, the receiver raced 30 yards. They got to the 45, just on the precipice of field goal range for Cairo Santos, whose career long was 55 yards. They had no timeout, so the Browns just had to keep them in the field of play. They almost get a sack, a couple of incompletions later. And it all comes down to, with five seconds left, a Hail Mary. Justin Fields would roll left. He would throw it to the end zone. Jim Donovan on the call said, knock it down. Well, the Browns knocked it down into the arms of Darnell Mooney, a Bears receiver on his back, but the ball hit off his chest, hit off his foot, went up into the air where DeAnthony Bell, starting in place of Grant Delbert, the team's leading tackler had to go on injured reserve. DeAnthony Bell caught it, ran to the one-yard line, sat down, and the Browns had won it. Young players stepping up all over the place. Ronnie Hickman had a huge day. You talk about DeAnthony Bell, his first career interceptions. Mahmoud Diabati, he had his first career fumble recovery. Cam Mitchell playing in the nickel. He had a tackle of Justin Fields on a fourth and one, a game-saving tackle. Alex Wright stepping in for Obo Okoronkwo. He had a big tackle on a third and one that got the ball back for the Browns so they could take the lead late. 
Everybody on this team stepped up. The resilience. And Joe Flacco, I mentioned the three touch interceptions earlier. Well, he would finish with 374 yards, two touchdown passes, leading this team down. Huge play after huge play to Goodwin, to Amari, to the Chief, to get this team a victory. You couldn't script this, Cleveland. It's unbelievable. This Browns team, the cardiac kids, whoo, they sure are back. You can never count this team out. You got to love the way they fight. We're going to break this game down because there is a lot to digest. At times, wasn't pretty. As Joe Flacco said last week, but when you come through in these games, that galvanizes teams for a playoff run, and this Browns team has put themselves in a position to absolutely make a playoff run. Nine and five, currently the number five seed in the AFC. We're going to break this one down tomorrow on Cleveland Browns Daily. Myself, Bill Bishop, and the Hoff, Joe Thomas. Enjoy it, Cleveland. This team, man, doesn't always have to be pretty, but they find a way to get it done. They win again, nine and five, your Cleveland Browns.